<laughs> I love you too, Lucy. <laughs> no, I love you more. <laughs> no, I love you more. <laughs> okay, you just keep those ovaries nice and humming for me, and I'll take care of the rest tonight. <laughs> okay, bye, baby. <laughs> Excuse me, Jim? Yeah, what's up? Dolly Parton is here for her recording session. All right, send her on in. Come on in, Miss Parton. <sighs> oh, sorry I'm late, Jim. I got caught up reading a good book and lost track of time. <laughs> no worries, Dolly. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm hanging in there, just uh, thinking about the state of the world and death and things. Oh, okay. okay, uh... How about you, Jim? How's Lucy? Oh, Lucy and I are doing fine. We still really want a kid, so we're trying. Fingers crossed. Hmm, yeah. Anyways, I'm just excited to get started on this compilation album oh, of yours. I'm excited too, Jim. There's nothing like revisiting the classics. Absolutely. Let's see what you've got in three, two, one. Well, I tumble out of bed and stumble to the kitchen, pour myself a cup of ambition and yawn and stretch and get unstuck in time. Get sent to the war and my friends start dying. At the labor camp, the Germans start hiding with folks like me in the slaughterhouse nine to five. <laughs> slaughterhouse nine to five. What a way to bomb Dresden. Get abducted by aliens you see in far dimensions. They make you fuck a porno star in a dome. It's geodesic. It's enough to give you PTSD. Scathe and satires about the horrors of war go. Sure, sure. Not typically what your songs are about. Well, it's just where my mind's at these days. Fatalism. Chaos. Suffering. <laughs> but so it goes, you know. Sure, sure. Bit of a darker, edgier Dolly Parton. I can dig it. Mm -hmm. Pretty significant rewrite of the lyrics. But anyway, we'll come back to it. Anything else you've been working on? Oh, some good ones, too. All right, let's hear another in three, two, four. Graham Green, Graham Green, Graham Green, Graham Green. <laughs> You wrote the 1955 novel, The Quiet American, which predicted the grisly outcome and subsequent U.S. foreign policy of the war in Vietnam. Well, I don't 
like to be dogmatic, but there's certainly something to be said for it as a philosophical point of view. <laughs> At least, according to Belgian philosopher Théophile de Giraud, in his book, The Impertinence of Procreation, anyway. Have you read it? <laughs> I have not read that one. Uh, I've got to talk to my wife. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Jim. Uh, Linda Ronstadt is here? Okay. Uh, and Emmylou Harris and Bobby Gentry are with her? Oh. Um, they said they want to blow up the studio because it's a quote, uh, a symbol of the moral decay of society stuck in the death grips of late stage capitalism. <laughs> um, and they have all these books by Noam Chomsky. <laughs> sure. Should I stop them? Honestly, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> you want to hear another one, Jim? I've got, uh, it's all wrong, it's not all right. Why'd you come in here looking like that without a face mask on? <laughs> and vote of many colors. That last one's about racially driven voter suppression. 